Breath of the Wild is a game I didn't expect. It has surprised me because of its surprises. I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I tried playing Ocarina of Time and to be honest, I didn't like it. I'm not saying that I think it's a bad game, I just couldn't really get into it. And let's be honest, for someone who didn't grow up with a Nintendo 64, it kind of handles poorly. So from my young and arrogant point of view, I kind of saw the franchise as a linear action puzzler that just disguised itself as a game built on discovery. Well, until I played Breath of the Wild, that is. It somehow absorbed me like no other game has. And I think this is why. Because of this naive thought process, I did not look into anything surrounding the game, because why would I if I were not interested in the franchise? Which turned out to be a good thing, because this is one of those games that is best to go in blind. It's built on discovery, which I guess is a decent segue into the spoiler warning. Please play this game, it's excellent, and especially in a time with lockdowns coming and going, it is still a good time to pick it up and get lost in. I feel like immersion is one of those weird topics that's kind of hard to quantify, but as of recent it has been associated with games like Metro Exodus for its in-game tactile maps and non-existent heads-up display. Also Red Dead Redemption 2 for the way it makes you complete every task, from creating tonics to skinning animals to opening drawers to cleaning your gun manual to make you feel like a cowboy because opening kitchen cupboards really brings out the inner outlaw in me. A common association with immersion is also photorealistic graphics. Red Dead 2 looks stunning for its depiction of Old West North America. And Metro Exodus looks amazing for its bleak and claustrophobic old tunnels of a collapsed society. So if Breath of the Wild mostly lacks any of these mechanics and traits, how does it drag you in with what can only be described as all-encompassing pure immersion? I said it lacks these features, but that's not entirely true. While Red Dead 2 makes you manually hold square to open a cupboard, really you're holding square to get Arthur to open the cupboard with a slow animation. Breath of the Wild still makes you manually do things, but they're always either based on the intertwining systems and your own knowledge of said systems, or always to interact with the world around you, which I'll get to in a bit. Take for instance building a campfire. In Red Dead Redemption 2, you go into your action wheel and go over to the campfire icon, and it'll fade to black. When it fades back in, there is a campfire pre-built just waiting for you. Also, these can stay lit in the rain, which is strange, but whatever, I'll let it pass. I'm not very nitpicky. It makes it feel disconnected from the open world, as if you are not a part of it, you're just sightseeing. Now, Breath of the Wild also lets you build a campfire, but how you do it is completely different. Most people can use their common sense to understand that to build a fire, you need wood, flint, and something to strike it with. But there's no menu. You have to use wood from the world, say a tree, you chomp down a tree with a sharp weapon, hit it again and there's wood, it has a tactile feeling. You can hit rocks and gems throughout the world to get flint, you place them next to each other and as long as there's no very strong wind or rain, you can create a fire. See how the world is not realistic, wood doesn't just bundle itself but it has rules and systems that interact with one another and make the world believable and engaging because the world is used as part of the gameplay systems instead of just a backdrop. The world itself is also why the game is so engaging. As I said, it is used to reinforce gameplay rather than serve as a hub from mission to mission. I feel like I'm making fun of Red Dead 2 a lot, Trust me, I like that game. M mostly. The open world in Breath of the Wild is almost completely unmarked. Aside from the main quest, which is just defeat divine beasts and defeat Ganon, there are essentially no markers for the world itself. 
You can even turn off these main markers with the Pro HUD mode, which I highly recommend, because you can still make your way around the world by bringing up the actual map and following sign directions in-game, which works for the exact same reason that in-game maps do in Metro Exodus or in Uncharted The Lost Legacy during the Western Ghats area, one of my favourites. So, Breath of the Wild kind of breaks the current popular view that immersion means photorealistic graphics and cleaning your gear to be immersive. Because of this, it's very easy to be absorbed into the world, which makes it very easy to spend 270 hours? Jesus. What I'm trying to say is, when most games try and convince you that tedious gameplay is immersive, Breath of the Wild is a nice change of pace that is immersive not because it is a reminder of why real life is so lame, but because it's an interesting world filled with fascinating characters and stories and systems that connect you with the world itself, and it definitely isn't bogged down by the mindless monotony of real life tasks. Um, hi, so this part's unscripted because uh, I just want to say a quick note on this video um, It's more of like a analytical one than what I would usually make There are plenty that I haven't published <laughs> because they're kind of awful Point is uh, my first video got like over 70 views in the first two days, which is kind of nuts um, So thank you to the people who watch that if you know, you're also watching this video uh, if so, thank you for watching very much. Um, I really like making these, and it makes me really happy that people are watching them. Uh, especially thank you, Tyler, uh, for actually making me do this uh, and getting me to actually upload these. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, bye.